Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mark and I thank you so much for coming by today. As I've said in other videos, I'm no longer in the classroom teaching art to honors high school art students. I am actually back to my career gig as a graphic designer. While I love what I do for a living, I really, really miss being in the classroom and working with these young students. The ideas and the concepts and the energy that they bring was just a real charm for me and I really, really enjoyed the experience. There were many students who I bonded with and really connected with and found that I learned from them as much as they learned from me. One student in particular, a young woman named Sabrina, she really created some amazing artwork, really blew me away because I got to watch this student go from just a passing interest, so I thought, in art to someone who had a real skill and ability in art and who I can see creating art for the rest of her life. Anyway, on my departure from that role as an art teacher, she surprised me with a gift and that was these. These are the pit brush markers that I've never used before and I commented on some that she had in the classroom. So as I left the role, she gave me these and I was completely humbled and flattered and just honored. So I figured, you know, why not do a review of these markers? I've never used them before. I'm not a big fan of markers myself, but I do have some. So I figured I would give these a shot and see how they work. This is sort of a little tribute to her as well. And to say thank you, Sabrina, so much for being such an incredible influence, just a positive role model in the classroom. And I wish you nothing but success in the future with your own artwork. So along with these pit markers, I went out and I bought another set just to complement the ones that she gave me. This is the uh, the flesh tone set. Now what I also have is I have the uh, the regular pit drawing markers as well, which I've had for some time. I've actually got a few sets of these. So I'm going to use these and apply the colored markers and just see what kind of results we get from these and just tell you what I think and what my thoughts are on these products and how I would use them myself if I decide to use markers again. So let's check these things out and um, Thank you again for coming by and I hope you enjoy this video. So let me start off by talking about these four pit artist pens. These are the drawing pens from Faber-Castell. They're black India ink and uh, they're really, really nice. I really like the consistency of products across Faber-Castell's product line and these are no different. The packaging is nice. It's very simple. It comes with good information on it and even the pens themselves have great information on them which I'll show you in a second. But uh, as far as line quality, the nibs on these, they're labeled with letters, small, uh, fine and medium and then B for brush which I really wish they had put the numbers on there, but that doesn't really bother me at all. The tips themselves are pretty hard and consistent and the line flow is very nice. It's consistent with every other brand in the market. So I really like that aspect of these pens. You can see the line quality is pretty nice. The pens themselves are very lightweight and compact. Uh, they feel very comfortable in your hand. The cap comes off easily and snaps onto the back end. And when you pull it off, the bottom of the pen doesn't come off like some other brands. So there's information all over the, the pen as well as light fastness and what kind of ink is in there. So these are really, really a nice addition to any pen collection that you might have. I really like these and I use them in conjunction with other pens like the Micron pens and the Copic Multiliner uh, disposable pens. All of these are disposable and you can't change out the ink cartridges. And I really like these. So these go in my travel kit with me and I've had them for years. Like I said, I have a few sets of these Faber-Castell pit pens. And uh, let's talk about the colored pens right after this coffee break. For this demonstration, I'm going to use this Stillman & Burn Zeta Series sketchbook. They're about $12 to $15 on Amazon. You can find them retail in some locations, but they're going to be a lot more money. So you might want to check out your, uh, your different options and see what's best for you. Now, what I like about these sketchbooks is the paper is a lot like Bristol board. It's very smooth and it's very heavy paper. So I really like that. I've got a couple of these sketchbooks. This is the smaller one. There's also a larger size, which again, I really like these sketchbooks especially for these kind of drawing pens. Now, if I'm using the Copic Multiliners or the Sakura Microns, I'm going to get the same, pretty much the same experience that I'm getting from these pit pens as well. Uh, a pretty consistent line, a very fluid line, and a very nice crisp line from each of those pens. So where the pit pens fall in it is pretty consistent with the other pens as well. Uh, as you can see here, I'm using the fine point, the F tip, uh, which 
is really nice. I really just wish they had a finer tip than this. The, uh, the small is thinner than this, but I wish they had like an extra small tip because here I'm using this tip to get the outlines. I realized after I started, I'm gonna have to go back over this with the thicker tip, the M tip, which is medium, just to make the uh, line quality a little thicker on the fish characters here and get them to pop a little more. So I'm gonna kind of pen in these different little details here, which you can see is going very smoothly and I really enjoy drawing in this kind of environment. It's really nice. Uh, these pens work very well on this kind of paper, but they work well on all kinds of paper. So uh, that's not even a problem, but you can see here I'm using the M tip now to get a thicker outline around these fish characters just to get them to pop a little more. Uh, I could have used the B tip, but that would have been a little iffy for me. I didn't want to get that kind of a brush quality on these fish. So you could use any of the tips like that. And I'm going to go back in with the thinnest tip, the S, the small tip, and add in some finer details. Again, I wish there was an extra small tip so I could get even finer details, but not a big deal. And again, the paper quality really doesn't matter. I've used these pens on handbook journals, field artist sketchbooks, pulp paper, uh, watercolor paper, and these pens work just fine across the board. So I have no problem with that. The pulpier papers tend to bleed out and suck the ink out of the pen a little quicker. This particular Stillman and Burns sketchbook doesn't do that at all. So you can just draw these lines. I'm stippling here and every dot is staying very consistent and smooth and it dries very quickly. That's another thing is that if I were to wipe my hand across, it might smudge, but the you can see where my finger's touching some of those leaves there. It's, uh, it's nice because it doesn't stay wet too long and I can actually move my hand around the page without you know moving that ink around as well. So I'm gonna fill in some details here, get this thing going here, nice little treasure chest. And now what I wanna do is I wanna use, this is a Molotow Graphics Art Masking Liquid Pen. Now I don't use masking fluid very often at all. I don't really care for it. Uh, I used to use a lot of masking fluids when I did airbrushing, but it's not something I like to use when I'm doing either painting or drawing or things like that. I know a lot of people like it, and that's why I'm using it here, just to give a demonstration of how these colored pens are going to respond to masking fluid and whether that's something that somebody might want to use. And uh, you can see here on the colored pens, they have the name and the color code and the light fast information on there, which is really, really helpful for people who are concerned about light fastness. That's not something that I worry about terribly, but I know there's a lot of people out there who are curious about that or it's important to them to know that. So you can see it's on all these pens, the asterisks there, three asterisks means uh, they're, they're good. They're really good to go. A couple that you'll see have two, and I haven't seen any in these kits that have one. So most of these are pretty good with the light fastness. Even a two rating is going to last a long time if it catches direct sunlight. So I wouldn't worry too much about the light fastness. Here you can see there's another one with three. And these are going to be pretty strong as far as light fastness goes. Now, in discussing markers, my history with markers is that I started with markers a long time ago when I was very young. And to be honest with you, I was never a big fan of markers because I didn't like the patchy quality they gave. And that's when I discovered the Copic Sketch Blender Pen. And these markers, they are just wonderful. I didn't have these when I was growing up, uh, the blender pens. And for me, that was like a revelation that you can actually smooth out and blend the colors between two different markers. And I'm sure those of you out there who have experienced these before are saying, yeah, sure, of course, that makes perfect sense. But imagine if you grew up never having a blender pen and you, you didn't know anything about them. Also, I wanted to note about the nibs, the tips of these pens. They're really durable. There's a lot of products out there, especially the cheaper products, where the tips of these kind of brush pens kind of feather apart and fall away from each other really quickly, and they become useless after a while. These pens seem to hold up really well, especially the pit drawing pens. They're really hard and work really well on a surface like this Stillman and Burns sketchbook. So anyway, my experience with markers was uh, one of those things where as a kid, I grew up using really cheap markers and I, that's all we had. So my experience was, oh, this is what markers are. And I took it as far as I could go with the cheap markers I had. But once I got into art school and I discovered that there was a real purpose to markers, that's when I discovered the power of what these things can do. What I learned was markers have a real ability to communicate color in a different way than watercolor or other mediums. It's a very bold, rich color. 
And I used to use it professionally when I did package mockups early, early in my career. I worked for this one company where I would have to do a lot of package mockups. Uh, I remember I did a, uh, <laughs> a picture of a paper shredder and you would just do these broad strokes of color. But, uh, you know, over time, I grew to not really care about markers too much. They weren't my thing and I got away from them. So I have a bunch of markers here and I, I use them occasionally. But again, they're not my favorite thing to use. But saying that, I'm really, really enjoying using these markers. I haven't used a good marker in many years, so this is a real treat for me to discover something new. And these pit markers, the colors are wonderful. The variety is outrageous. There's about 58 markers in this entire set, and you can add on to the set if you want. And uh, here I'm just lifting off this uh, the masking fluid so you can see. The masking fluid worked just fine. No problems whatsoever. And I'm even going in with this white gel pen to add some extra highlights in there and just get some more details. But um, as far as what I was saying about the, uh, the pit markers here, there's a huge set collection you can invest in if you're interested in these markers. And I definitely want to get another set. I've got four sets and there's a uh, something about blues that I have to look at. And I want to check that out as well. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you to see what you can do with these pens, these brush markers, and I really enjoyed them. I thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. If you like the music, I have my music online for free over at noisetrade.com. And again, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for you, and take care, and God bless.